are the work of the Lord. They are set it by all who delight in them. Splendor and majestic is his work. And his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonders to be remembered. Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. He has made known to his people the power of his word. giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of the hand are true and just. All his precepts are sure. They are upheld forever and ever. They are performed in truth and uprightness.
a religious example. And in the midst of being all of that, David, thank you, sir, was imperfect. David had flaws. David was messed up. David, David was a human being. Even though he was a man after God's own heart, David had some struggles. Is there anybody in the room that got some struggles? Is there anybody in the room that got issues that deserve tissues? Is there anyone in the room who is struggling with, if it ain't one thing, it's another. By the time you get through with this, Something else pop up before that's finished. Yes, By the time you get the children on the straight and narrow, right. spouse start acting crazy. Right. By the time you get spouse, spouse right, boss starts flipping out. <laughs> By the time boss is set straight and God has let him know or let her know who's really in charge, then your, your fellow employees, your co-workers act up. Right. Let me tell you, we got some trouble. David says in verse number one, he's, he says, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Yes, Lord. You see, David is going before the Lord. He's in prayer before the Lord. And he is the leader of Israel. And as he's in prayer, the people join in with him and the people are in unison with him. I, I said the people. The people right. was praying as the leader was praying. I just want to let you know that's why I say to you, I say to you, I'm going to be praying with you because you ought not allow me to do all your praying for you. I, I shouldn't be praying for you and then you waiting on God to answer my prayer, but as I pray with you, then God answer our prayer. So the Bible says, the, the history says, the theologians believe that David was going into the sanctuary. He was there for prayer and he was talking to God because he was getting ready to go into the heat of battle. Let me tell you, this word trouble means depression. And you know, we, you know, mental illness is all around us, mental illness even in everyone's family. And let me tell you, depression will take you over. Depression will rob you of your blessings. Yes. So David was at the point where he dealt with this trouble, and when he dealt with this trouble, this trouble meant depression. All right. So in the midst of it, David knew where to turn. Now David had some issues. Mm -hmm. David had some some bad issues. Matter of fact, David suffered from the most the, the best known issue of bad, bad, and beyond. I said, David, David had an issue, and his issue, his, his, his one issue was bed, bath, and beyond. In other words, he saw her bathing. He rose up from his bed. He saw her bathing, and he went beyond the duty to call her. All right, all right, he did. And we, we know it, we know it, but see, we can't look down our nose at David. All right. Because we got some issues that's just as bad as David. You see, all it takes for us is to get one day of salvation under our belt. And then we really holy than anybody else. We, we really got it going on. I mean, matter of fact, you remember when you got saved? Yes, Lord. And everybody else began all of a sudden to go to hell? You begin to condemn them to hell because now I'm saved. Now, you've been wretched all your life. You've been wretched all your life. You've been messed up all your life. And how do I know that? Because a man born of a woman is full of trouble and his days are short. But the fact of the matter is the Bible says we all are sinners. We all fall short. We all messed up. We all do those things that are not pleasing in the sight of God. So David the king, David the shepherd, David the military leader had problems. But he has sense enough to run to God. Yes, right. Yes, right. Let, let me tell you, if you're in trouble, don't be so arrogant that you don't run to God. All right, now, all right. David, the difference between Saul and David is that when David got in trouble, he humbled himself 
before the Lord and he knew how to call on God. Right. When things get really bad for you, you better know who to call. Yes. And it's not Ghostbusters. All right. You better call on the Lord. All right. He says, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. What he's saying to us is, all of us going to have some trouble. Yes, all of us going to have some depression in our lives. Mm. All of us going to have, some of y'all have some mental illnesses that I see that you think you don't have. <laughs> You don't have to be diagnosed with it. All right. You don't have to have a doctor to see it. Matter of fact, in the 90s, we just found out what bipolar was. I know some folks that's seven polar, <laughs> that's tripolar. Some people that just really, they change everything and they glad about it. They'll tell you in a minute, you don't want me to, you don't want to see the other side. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's good for your children, but that's not good for everyday conversation. All right. Yeah, your children need to see every side of it. Yeah. They need to know, the children need to know that you lose your mind sometimes. All right. All right. Because sometimes, as children, we don't react until we just flat lose. We see mom and daddy flat lose their mind. All right. And you know my mama didn't have a problem. My daddy didn't have a problem with losing. They didn't have a problem with what with, with people thought of them. They just lost it. When I was at home, I heard, I heard mama talk about, you know, none of my children. Now, all of her children are in the 50s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're talking about, they're talking about teenagers running through the street and just spraying boys that are bouncing the basketball in the park. They just, they're not bothering anybody. They're not, not looting. They're not stealing. They're just bouncing the basketball in the park. And all of a sudden, somebody drives by and just, <laughs> shoot up the face and drive off. Teenagers hospitalized. Mm -hmm. That's why we gotta be where we need to be when we're supposed to be there. And I'm telling you, trouble will find you even when you're where you're supposed to be. All right, all right. Trouble will find you. And that's why, because people are going through mental issues that they they do, they're really good. Mm -hmm. If that's not a mental issue, people that have not done anything against you. And just take them out. David says, you better know who to call. You need to call on Lord. He says, may the Lord answer you when you call. Yes. David, David is in prayer, and he's praying, and when he's praying, he says he's going to remember the name of the Lord. Yes. He says that I'm going to remember the name of the Lord. I'm going to remember his name in the sanctuary, and I'm going to remember his name out of the sanctuary. He says, I'm going to call on the Lord for some help. Anybody need any help in the room? Right now. Now don't fool me now. Do you just need any kind of help? Right now. Are you just balling, shot calling, got it going on any old kind of way? You don't really need any help. You just, you just accepting a little help. You remind me of people when they go to give you something. That, oh, you don't have to do it and you still do it. Oh, you don't have to do that, baby. I mean, you don't have to give it. And then if you put, put, go to put it back in your pocket, they about to knock you over. We have to get to a point where we humble ourselves before God and tell God, God, I need some help. God, I'm struggling. God, I'm not doing so well. I remember the days my daughter would come to me and say, Daddy, I'm not doing well. And as a child of God, draw up, come to God. Every now and then, say, God, I'm not doing well. God, I have faked it as long as I can. God, I know I've been putting up a show in front of the church folk. Right. You see, folk do a lot of things in front of church folk. All right, all right. Things that they normally wouldn't do, right. they do it in front of church folk because church folk are the gossiping crowd. All right, now. And so you put on a facade, you put on a face, you put on a mask in front of church folk. Right. But church folk do not have a hell to put you in, not a heaven to send you to. You need to understand that the God is the one, the God that we serve, the God we worship, the only true and the living God is the only one we ought to give homage to. We ought to praise him. It says we ought to consecrate on him. It says that, that God will give you the, your heart's desire. 
Yes. We ought to be praying. We ought to be praying for each other. Yes. You may not see where it's necessary for me to have it. Mm. But you ought to be praying that God gives me my heart desire. Yes. You may not understand that I really need it. But you ought to be praying, God, give him his heart's desire. You may not understand why she needs it, or he needs it, or they need it. But you ought to be praying, as a fellow Christian in this world, you ought to be praying, God, give them their heart's desire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You don't have to pray for me a car. They give those away when you can't afford them. You, you, don't, you don't have to really pray for me a house. Unless I'm homeless. But what you need to pray for is that God will fulfill me. Yes. And God will give me my heart's desire. We ought to pray for our fellow Christians, fellow brothers and sisters, even when we don't understand what they're going through. Right. Matter of fact, it's not your business what they're going through. Right. Matter of fact, you ought to pray. Right. If they ask you to pray, you ought not even ask them why to pray. Right. You ought to be praying, Lord, I ask you to bless them and give them favor. Yes. Bless them and give them their heart's desire. Yes. God, fulfill them and make them who they are. Yes. Bring them to the next level in their walk. Lord, bless their spirit man. Bless their social man. Bless them in their mental state. Bless their emotional state. Yes. The prayer where you pray, Lord, we don't know, that's a good prayer. Because <laughs> sometimes it's better that you don't know. You know, I've, I've heard folk put stuff, folk stuff on, on front street in their prayer. And now we got Facebook, they do the prayer in the Facebook and put it all on front street. Lord bless Susie Ann's boy that got arrested last night for doing drugs. Lord, they bombarded the house. Oh, Lord, 20, 20 police officers jumped out the back of the squad. Lord bless them in the name. Now you told all of them this. So you have to get to a point in your life where you are mature enough to pray that God gives them their heart's desire. Yes. David prayed. And the people are praying in unison. It says to us today that when we pray, we ought to pray together. Yes. We ought to pray on one accord. We ought to pray in unison. Let me tell you, if, if breakthroughs are going to happen, yes. the way God can make them happen, it's going to take the church to fall down and pray. If the next president is to be avoided from getting back in there, we, it's going to take the church praying, not talking. If we're not going to have a worldwide, at least a United States, January 6th, when you can't drive down the road without being taunted, and bullet. If we're going to have a situation where we can make America great again, It's going to take the church to call on God. David knew what to call. David knew where to call. David knew how to have his petitions heard by God. You can talk about David all you want to, but one thing about David, he knew where to run. He knew where to hide. We used to play hide and go seek. And, and somebody, somebody would always be the winner because that person would never be found. But guess what? That person had a secret hiding place. Right. And that person knew where to run every time we played hide and go seek. Let me tell you, in your house, in your car, at your job, you ought to have a secret hiding place where you can call on God and say, Lord, help me. Help me. But if you think you're all there in the bag of chips, you never call on God because you won't uh, you won't allow yourself to say, God, I need you. The songwriter said, I need you. I need you every hour. I need you every day. I need you every minute, every second. Songwriter says, I need you now. And then he concludes the song by saying, right away. Do you need him right now? You need him right away. Do you need him? Yeah. I, I got to have him right away. He says, not a day, not an hour, not a minute, not a, not a second. I need you and I need you right now. I need you right away. Yeah. Let me just say this. Don't wait until you're in bad shape to tell God about it. You ought to have a fellowship with God. You ought to have a day-to-day -day walk with God. 
So when the enemy shows up, the Bible says God will raise up a standard against him. When the enemy, you can look at it two, two different ways. Number one, when the enemy comes in like a flood. Number one, when the enemy floods your life, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against you. The second way of looking at that passage is when the enemy comes in. When the enemy shows up, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will like a flood raise a standard against you. God is able. God can <laughs> and God will. Yes, he says in verses 1 through 5, he says that the, the leader is praying. Mm. I want to say to you, don't allow your leader to pray by himself. All right, all right, all right. Don't allow mama to pray by herself. Don't allow daddy to pray by himself. Don't allow your preacher to pray by himself. For the Bible says they pray together on one accord in unison. There are some things that God has put in you. There are some experiences that God has taken you through that when you call on God, the angels get busy. That's right. That's right. Don't allow the preacher to pray by himself. The Bible says that the whole congregation prayed. There was intercession. As, as that person was praying, someone was talking to God about that person. And on behalf of that person. Now, when somebody announces a fast, you ought to be praying for the person that if you, if you don't even fast. Right. If you say you can't cut the meat, if you say you can't cut the beef, if you can't cut the pork, if you can't cut the bread, you can at least pray. Because when a person is in the midst of praying and in the midst of fasting, the devil really gets busy. And when the devil gets busy, those of us who are born of God ought to pray in unison. Lord, bless them as they go through this moment of fasting. Get to verse number six. He says, now I know God saves. He says that, first of all, I got to trust in God. He says, I know that God saves. In other words, God saves his anointed. God looks out for his anointed. For the word of God says, touch, my touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Just touch that. And so you make sure that you trust in God where, when the person of God get out of the will of God, you pray to that person that God would deal with it. First of all, you need to understand that David trusted God and God dealt with him. He blessed him on one hand and he chastised him on the other. And God's blessings are better than our blessings. God's chastising is better than our chastising. God knows how to bless and chastise. God's wrath is real. He says, he says, now I know the Lord saved his anointed. Yes. He will answer him for his hope from his holy heaven with saving strength that's in his right hand. Whenever it talks about the right hand, the, especially the right hand of God, it is the powerful hand. It is that hand that God uses to move when he moves when you can't move. That's why when God moves, we ought to move just like God moves. Because we ought to follow God. Because God is looking out for the anointed one. He is looking out for those who he has put his energy into. He is looking out for the one that he has blessed. So touch not. My brother, well, I can push him. But you use your tongue. And James says, your tongue... And he said, the James, James says it like this. He says, the little bit of flour on the bottom of the boat, that, that the rudder that, that, that moves back and forth controls the whole boat. But man can never tame his tongue. James says, the little bitty bit, little piece of metal or wood or whatever you've chosen, that's stuck in, in the, the horse's mouth can turn that horse every which way. That horse can be tamed but you can't take your tongue without the right, right. No, you didn't push him, you didn't slap him, you didn't, you didn't run over him, but your tongue messed up. Oh, yeah. right. 
It's the tongue. It's the tongue. You can't, you can't, you, you know, I can always tell. Not at this church, but at other churches. When I go to other churches and preach, I can always tell. When they're growing up at home, I talk about the preacher. Because the children show up with a disposition that was different from the way it was last time. I know that doesn't happen in this church, but see, the children are real. The children can't hold it. The children, even if they, you, you know you couldn't say, <clears throat> and walk away. Even when they look down or they, they disobey your, your orders, it's because some grown person at the house have used, has used their tongue to misuse and have abused a lot. Just not my Lord, do my prophet go on. So he says, he says, I know that God can save, and God saves with his right hand. This word saved in the original Hebrew text means that God has already saved, so he's walking in faith. My first point, as I said to you, is to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. This Yahweh God, trust in the Lord. This God who is the God of proper name for the Israelites. Trust in the Lord, the one who's the supreme ruler. Trust in the Lord, the magistrate, the final judge. Trust in the Lord, the ruler himself. Trust in the Lord. He trusts the Lord so much, he says, he says, you know, shout it out. I know the Lord got this. I got this. You know, people will promise you, I got you, I got you. You ain't got nothing to worry about, I got you, I got you. And you do it five years because somebody else got you. I got you, I got you, I got you. I got you. Joseph, Joseph was thrown in, thrown in the dungeon. Joseph was thrown in the pit. The guy getting out said, man, I got you. Don't worry about it, I'll be back, man. I'll make sure I talk to the king on you. I got you, man. He didn't get it. He kept right on serving in the pit. Man, when I get out, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of you, man. Young people, just remember, your friends, they had a good thing when they promised you. But when they got out there and got on their own and they got out of trouble for themselves, they forgot about you. That's why you need to call on the Lord. David trusts the Lord. David trusts this. This word trust means to keep in memory. Yeah, uh -huh. This word trust means to ponder over the Lord. This word trust means that the king prayed and the people prayed in unison. So not only did the king pray, the people prayed. Mm -hmm. Some people say, I don't want you praying against me. The Bible says that they prayed together. Yeah. They prayed about the same thing. They prayed in unison. Because they trust the Lord. My next point is, there was assurance in the Lord. They, they trust the Lord, but they had some assurance of the Lord. They, had, they trust the Lord for God's favor. They trusted God. They had the assurance that God would give them favor. They were walking by faith as if it already happened. I told you the word saved means saved, da, as if this already have taken place. So they walk with the Lord, and when they walk with the Lord, they pray for God's favor. People around here praying for money, praying for a new car, ask God for favor. When you pray for favor, God got you. When you walk for favor, when you walk in with favor, take your bath, put your clothes on, walk in with your head up, and also your shoulders squared away. Go ahead and ask for it. You see, I, I've been coaching people how to ask for a raise. You do your job well. And they're going to tell you, well, you got to wait till the raise season come up. But see, they don't understand this is my season. And, and I, I don't have to wait to the, to the first of the year. I am walking in my season. And when you're walking in your season, the Bible says in Psalm number one, that in his season, he gives us leaf and he gives us fruit. You got to walk in your season. And for me, if I'm going to ask for something, every year is my season. If they're going to give a raise in March, they're going to give a bonus in March. By February, I'm already asking. And I'm not asking for the one they've already promised in March because that was already on the books, brother, brother Whitlock. That was already set up. Everybody's going to get that one. I want favor of God, and I want it in November. I want it in July, and I want another one in March, too. Are you with me? I remember I, I, I remember I had a bad review one year. 
I mean, it was so bad that they were going to write me up. And on my way, I had already gotten word that, man, you got a bad review. On my way up to the office, I said, God, I'm in trouble. God, I need you. God, verse, in, 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 in Psalm 21, he goes on to talk about the fact, God, my enemies have set up a camp to throw me off. So I told God, God, I need favor. Yes. I walked in the room, and I didn't know this, but the supervisor's son passed away several years ago. And this was the anniversary of when his son passed away, and therefore he was upset with God. And because he was upset with God, he was going to really, I mean, this is a bad time to go before the king. <laughs> this is a bad time to go in with a bad review. Yes. So in the middle of the review, he began to talk to me about, you know, I really have been sad today because this is the anniversary maybe 10 years ago where my son passed away. And ever since then, I've been upset at God. Look what God did. Boom! He threw the door wide open. He threw the door wide open. Now the focus is no longer on my bad review. Now the focus is on God because he introduced God. And let me tell you, when you got a bad situation, don't Focus on your bad situation. Focus on God. My, my assurance popped in. And I asked God for favor on my way there. And I had the faith that it had already happened. And if they run me off anyway, they're going to run me off anyway. People don't run you off because you mention the name of Jesus. They run you off to keep on mentioning the name of Jesus over and over again. And let me tell you, just trust God and just walk with him. Do your job. Do what's right. And have the assurance that God will give you favor in the midst of your enemies. He will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. What the psalmist is really saying is that he will set up a banquet right in your presence where your enemies are looking on. You are eating Food that you never deserve, food that you never worked for, because God has given you, given you favor. If Mephibosheth was here, Mephibosheth would tell you that I was in Lodabar, a low-down place, a place that was the ghetto. I was living in Lodabar. Yeah. I was living in this town that, that was like trash. Yeah. And then when I was young, my nurse was carrying me and running with me and dropped me, and now I got a leg and I can't walk. She broke my leg, and for that, I'm calling myself a low-down dog. Wow. His self-esteem was gone. Yes. But then one day, because of Jonathan and David being great friends, when David got on the throne, he said, is there anybody of the house of Saul that I can show favor to? Uh -huh. And then he called for Mephibosheth. He said, oh, there's that little boy down there in, in Lodabar in the place in the ghetto that's named Mephibosheth. Go and get Mephibosheth, David said. And he came, and guess what? When he sat at the king's table, the king's table has a skirt around it, has a tablecloth on it. You couldn't tell Mephibosheth was, was crippled because he was sitting at the king's table. That's what I want God to do for me. I want God to take me places, introduce me to people by his favor, and then the money will come. I mean, houses will come. Cars will come. Good attitudes from children will come if your focus is on God. Keep God the aim of your prayer. When we pray, we ought to aim our prayers at God. And that's why Jesus says to us, Jesus says, when you start your prayer, start your prayer by saying hallelujah to your name. God, we glorify you. We magnify you. Lord, we lift you up. You are good. You are God all by yourself. Even if you don't do what I want you to do in this prayer. Lord, I worship you today. I praise you today. I thank you, God, for who you are. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Lord, we glorify you. Thank you, God. That's when the church catches on fire. When we just focus on God. Don't focus on your problems. Don't focus on your situation. So they had the assurance in the Lord. So the reason why they were able to ask God for favor is because they considered God's character. Yeah. And God's character is he can do it. Yeah. 
Matter of fact, I know God can do it because he's the God that stepped out on nothing in the midst of nowhere, in the middle of darkness, and said, let there be, and light came skipping down through the universe. It's because he is God. So we want God's favor, and we want God to show forth his character. And we know God can do it. We have the assurance that God can do it because of God's reputation. God has a resume that he's done. And what he did for Moses, he can do it for you. What he did for Elizabeth, he can do it for you. What he did for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he can do it for you. Stop praying prayers for other people believing that God can use your prayer to heal others when you don't think God can use your prayer to heal you. God can do it. He has a reputation. He has set the course. He has set the standard that no other God can set. Yes. God can do it. And stop hanging around negative folk. Yes. They're going to tell you it will never happen. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Psalm 111 that God did it in a miraculous way. Yes, he, did. Yes. he did it in a way that yes. no other God no can do. God. Yes. He's God, I tell you. He's not a small G God. He's a big G God. He has a reputation. He can do it. He will make the devil bring it to you. He will make the devil take care of you. I went over to, to a guy's house. The guy was trying to sell a, a generator. So he was going to take us to a guy's house that, that already had a generator. He said that when he, he, he was there, for many years, the neighbors wouldn't even speak to him. He said the neighbors were really arrogant toward him. He said the neighbors were really point blank prejudiced toward him. They wouldn't speak to him, and then when they see him walk outside, they turn around the other way so they couldn't look at him. But let me tell you the God we serve. When he got a generator, and, and after he had the generator for about a year or so, the Houston freeze, the Texas freeze took place. I said, I said they wouldn't speak to him. They wouldn't talk. Of, they, they, you knew they were talking about him. They wouldn't talk to him. And then they, when they looked at him, they looked down their nose at him because he was a different flavor than they are. But when the Texas freeze came, he was the only one in the cul-de-sac with the generator. And he said, man, I, I had to sleep with neighbors over here a few nights during the freeze. I said, what, you went over there and invited them? He said, no, they came and sought me out. <laughs> he said, the same neighbors that wouldn't speak to me, the same neighbors that treat me like I was dirt. I said, you tell me they sought you out. Tell me. I said, man, give me more, give me more, tell me more. He said, they knocked on my door. I said, they didn't ring the bell. He said, no, it was too cold out there. They wanted to get me in a hurry. He said, they rang the bell one time and I didn't go. They started knocking on my door. It's because they heard my generator crack up outside. God will make your enemies your footstool. He has a reputation of doing it. You ought to, you ought to pray with assurance. Yes, Lord. I want to tell somebody today, just keep praying with the surety. Yes. You ought to pray with the surety. He says, some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. What he's saying to us that some trust in equipment to make it happen. But I am, we will trust in the name of the Lord. Yes. You keep trusting the name of the Lord. Then they trust him. My third point, and I leave the Lord. Triumph in the Lord. All right. Yeah, you ought to trust in the Lord. Yeah. You ought to have an insurance in the Lord. But then you ought to triumph in the Lord. All right. You see, when God shows up mm. and God delivers you yes, Lord. and God causes you to triumph, mm -hmm. stop apologizing to people. Oh, I'm so sorry. Because people will always come to you and say stuff like this. When you're blessed, they will say, everybody ain't able. You get right in there with them. You, and you let them know that you're right. Everybody's not able. But the God I serve, 
the God I serve. The songwriters say, they don't know what I do. They see me riding what I want to ride and do what I want to do, buy what I want to buy, and they don't know when I get home, I hit the floor. <laughs> and I call on God. And let me tell you, if you don't have what you want yet, Keep blessing God and, and keep trusting God. Keep having the assurance of God. And God, God will cause you to triumph over your enemy. Anybody got any known enemies? Anybody got I mean, some people, some people when they die, they say he didn't have an enemy in the world. I just want to serve you notice. When my tongue cleaves to the roof of my mouth, when they fold my hands in service for the last time, some of the folk that's in the audience will be my enemy. And it doesn't bother me because I have enemies, because I have a God that has placed me high and walked with me and talked with me. And they don't, don't let folk make you apologize for your blessing. I know that. I mean, people walk around here, oh, I'm so sorry. And you tiptoeing and, and hiding things. It reminds me when we lived in, on the plantation. When we lived on the plantation and Papa, my mama's daddy, got a brand new car, he would keep driving the old car in to work. And I'm like, Papa, you got a brand new car. I mean, you got a brand new 72 car. Why you don't drive the brand new car and you still driving this 53 Bel Air? He said, boy, you just don't know. If I drive a new car in, they will cut my hours. If I drive a new car in, then they may lay me off. But as long as I'm driving the old car, they keep giving me raises. And they keep right on blessing me. You see, the old folk had, had, had the right thing in mind because he, he said they keep blessing me. And then sometimes Big Mama would come home and I said, Mama, why you got to ride in the back of the car while that lady drives you and won't let you sit in the front of the car? Big Mama said it like that. She said, baby, I got my very own show. This is before Uber came out. She said, I got my very own chauffeur, and, and this chauffeur is not a cost. I don't know how you interpret that, but this chauffeur is not a cost. How many of y'all know what a cost is? Oh, here we go. In the black and white movies, they would have a butler that stood at the door, and that butler would serve everybody there. And you knew when the, when the season saints was talking about a black man in the movie because what they would say is, look old cuff, old cuff, sharp standing up there. That's what, that was their, their, their word, their cold word when a person was in the movie that you was not in the movie. And so what you have to understand, it's all right to be cuff, baby. It, it's, it's all right to be, be the token, honey. It's all right to be the one, the, the one Hispanic or the one black or the one Asian. It's all right to be the only one because God is blessing you and he's causing you to try out because he's giving you faith. Just, just walk with God. Just walk with him. So try out and don't apologize for your, your victory in God. And when we try out, we, we try out because of God's anointing. When you walk in the room, they see something different. When you walk in the room, they feel something different. When you walk in the room, they, they act somewhat differently. It's because the anointing is flowing. The anointing is present. Now, if you if you walk in the room and they say, hit this, there's a problem. Let me say that again. If you walk in the room and they offer you some, then that's a problem. That means your anointing is not showing. Yeah. But when you walk in the room and they say, oh, there, there she comes. Right. Don't worry about them talking about you. It's because they see the anointing. And where the anointing is, it breaks the yoke. The anointing. God's anointing. In, in order to triumph, you need God's power. Look at what it says. God delivers us with his powerful right hand. While other folk, depending on stuff and equipment, horses and chariots, we come in the name of the Lord. We will remember the name of the Lord. And we have come to the conclusion, we've already seen them fall. We've already seen them bowing. Yes, Lord. But we're standing upright. We have been risen. Dr. King says it like this. You cannot keep a good man in the mud unless you stay in the mud with him. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 
You ought to make sure that you trust in God. Don't trust in stuff. Don't trust in bosses. Don't trust in chariots nor horses. And then he says in verse number nine, save Lord. He says, save Lord. This word save is an expression as if it's already done. And you ought to believe that it's already done. You ought to shout like it's already done. You ought to praise like it's already done. You ought to worship like it's already done. Then it says, may the king answer us when we call. This word king is in capital letters. Yes, Lord. The king of kings yes, king. and the Lord of lords. Yes, Lord. His name is Jesus. Yes, the same Jesus that died yes. over 2,000 years ago. The same Jesus that he hung on the stake. The same Jesus mean men killed. The same Jesus that they buried in a barber tomb. That same Jesus that rose early that third day morning. He got you. He has you. I know that, that ends don't meet sometimes. I know that, that stuff is getting smaller and more expensive. I know that we're paying higher prices than we ever paid before, but you make sure you trust in the Lord. You make sure that you have assurance in the Lord, and then you can triumph in the Lord. That same Jesus they buried. They thought they had him. Yeah. But early that third day morning, yeah. he rose with all power yeah. in heaven and earth in, and earth. in his hand. Yes, Lord. We will yes. trust yes. in the Lord. Yes. The door of the church is open. Amen. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. Don't, don't, don't wait till you get it right. You will never get it right. You need to come to Jesus so he can get it right. The door is open. What that means is that this is your opportunity. This is your opportunity to get to know Jesus. It's your opportunity to get to know him in the departing of your sins. This is your opportunity to, to qualify for heaven. If you never received Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is your moment. You ought to try him. Try Jesus. Trust him. I have the assurance that he will see you through. I know his reputation. He's done it for others. And he'll do the same thing for you. If you never received him, just bow your head for a moment with me and invite him into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. We believe that you're now born again. We believe that you're on your way to heaven. We believe that you need to be in a good Bible teaching church. We believe that you ought to be in Sunday school. We believe that you ought to be in Bible study. We believe that you ought to be in worship service. So God can grow you. And if you need a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. We are a bilingual church, Spanish and English, or English and Spanish, and we are glad to have you join us. Please let us know if you want to be a part of our church. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, Father God, that we are willing to trust in the Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that is, as we trust you, you give us the assurance because of your character, because of your reputation, and because of your faith. Lord, we walk in faith that you will allow us to triumph because you are God and you are God alone. We thank you now. We bless your name. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.
it is now time for offering. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand, and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand, and you will. You will be served. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. Uh, if you want to mail in your gift, you can mail it in to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Father God, we thank you, Father, for blessing us. We thank you, Father, for another privilege, another opportunity to give unto you. We pray that you bless every giver. Bless us, Father God, as you have given unto us. And we thank you for every gift. We thank you, Father God, for every piece of money. We thank you, Father God, for the increase and the income. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. When I just decide to stand, follow first and precious on the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's time offering and sacrifice against you. you to heal as only you can, protect as only you can, deliver as only you can. Bless, Father God, that they will have the desires of their hearts. Bless them, Father God, that they will be gracious to you as you are gracious to them. We pray, Father God, that you take away all pain, all sickness. We pray, Father God, that you take away all bereavement. Lord, we pray, Father God, that you deliver us afresh and anew. Lord, bless us to be fulfilled by only you, Father God. Bless us to triumph. Bless us, Father God, to glorify you as you continue to bless us. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and thank you. We thank God for who he is and what he's already done. Our upcoming events include the fact that we'll continue to pray for our youth and our young people for schools. Um, when I was a boy, we had prayer in school. Now we have to pray out of school. But one thing about it, we serve the God who can heal whether there's prayer in the school or prayer out of the school. So let's lift 
the school system and the youth and young people before the Lord and bless, bless his holy name. Um, this month is Clergy Appreciation Month. It's Clergy Appreciation Month, the month of October. And you can get your flu vaccinations at the Holy Trinity Church on October the 23rd. You can get your flu vaccination. That's a Sunday, October the 23rd, 23rd, immediately after their service. So please, ma'am, please, sir, if you desire a flu shot, please go ahead and get your flu shot. Amen. 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 The 10K walk, run, and cycle. 10K walk, run, and cycle is upon us. We are doing this for the benefit of the roads. If you cannot ride, if you cannot walk, if you cannot run, come on, meet us out at Tom Bass Park so we can uh, um, make a big dent in our goal of $5,000 ready. Brother, come out at 7 a.m. and make a contribution to the roads and walk for fun. If you know you need to walk, come on out and walk, amen. Somebody said it's too early for you, that's why you need to walk, because you've been saying it's too early, amen. So come on out and walk, come on out and run, and come on, be on time, and let's make it happen. Uh, there will be cyclists, cyclists there, and there will be runners there, and if you want to walk, come out and walk. Well, preacher, I can't walk. Well, come and sit. Come on and sit and be a part. We're doing this to make sure that uh, women have a better way of life. Uh, the the African American women and the Hispanic women have proven to be the ones who who die early because of a lack of early protection of, of breast cancer. So we want to change that. We want to make sure that we have an opportunity. And what the Rose does, they give free mammograms to women who do not have insurance. And the way they do that is through our contributions and also through the women who do have insurance having to pay for for those by coming to get their get their uh, treatment or getting their detection there. So this is a worthy cause. Now, if you're not gonna make it, be honest with yourself. Don't give me any excuses. Just uh, give a donation as you leave today or send a donation to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com in our Zelle account. Make sure you give market to the 10K walk run cycle and we'll be glad to accommodate them as they um, um, collect money from us. Our goal again is $5,000. Last year we reached the goal of 5,000. Our goal was 2,500 last year and we reached $5,000. And we're looking to reach 5,000 again this year. So thank you so much for your participation. Thank you for giving to the Rose and they'll be by to thank you also, amen. Thank you so much. Let us stand to be dismissed. Uh, Sister Marie Hughes had a birthday, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. she's, a, she's a whole. Anybody else had a birthday? Anybody else had a, had a birthday? Yeah. Let's sing Happy Birthday, Sister Hazel Carter. I mean Hazel Carter. Why don't we sing Happy Birthday before we leave? Father God, that we have the assurance that you can do it. And God, we thank you that we are triumphant over all of our things because of you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, 
unto him be power, glory, and dominion until we meet again. Let us sing by saying. Amen. God bless you. You are this.